Welcome to our study of Psalms chapter 73 tonight. If I make a little announcement to tomorrow afternoon, Esther, Easter in disguise. Get yourself something soft to throw that won't cause any damage. So Psalm 73, a psalm of Asaph, and Asaph is the music director that David appointed over the music. He was in charge, he was under David. Psalms is a song book in our Bible. So this is his song. Truly God is good to Israel, and that's an amen true fact. A man... And a woman, completely out of age, 100 years old and 90 years old, has a child. And that child, his wife was barren. Isaac and Rebecca. Rebecca was barren. She gives birth to two children. And Jacob, man, the mess that he had with his wives and his children. And all through the book of Exodus. And all through the Old Testament and the prophecies yet to follow. The coming of Israel to be the nation above all nations. Where their King Messiah Jesus Christ will be seated in Jerusalem. Even to such as are of a clean heart. And God doesn't go for filthy hearts. The clean heart. You want to do right. And we're all sinners. But you want to do right. But as for me, Asaph, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I am opposite of the blessing of Israel. Israel has been so truly blessed by God, verse 1. Me? I'm a different story. I've gone backwards. Why? For I was envious. That's number one sin right there. Somebody got better than I got. I didn't get what should be coming to me. For I was envious at the foolish. Now, Asaph is opposite of foolish. He has been signed by King David, a man after God's own heart. He has been assigned to music director of what? All of God's music at the temple. The singers, the musicians, the, the instruments, and what is to be played and when it's to be played. And the practicing and the perfection. Asaph is no fool. When I saw the prosperity, there's another evil word. We have an evil word called prosperity, the prosperity gospel. God will richly increase everything of yours with, you know, you'll have no more health problems, everything be hunky dory, and that's a lie, and that's foolish. Because you can't find that guarantee in the Bible. Prosperity of the wicked. Now that wicked again, that that's an off revelation of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to be famous. Everybody's got to shop his store. Because you got to receive his mark on your forehead or on your right hand to do any business with him. And if you don't get that mark, you're not going to do any business. So he's going to get capital gain. He's going to get riches and fame. But Asaph, you know, the wicked, those who didn't go to temple. Or maybe those who did go to temple and, you know, they were their lives were wicked. A show. People do that today. They go to church, but their mind is alienated from God. For there are no bands in their death. They're not in prison. They're not chained. They're not handcuffed. They're not tied to burdens. That's what bands mean. A chain, a rope, bondage. 
but their strength is firm. The rich, the wicked, the poor, the evil, they look so free. Uh, well, the expression would be fancy free. They are not in trouble as other men. Now he's put it to the foolish wicked, verse 3. Every man has troubles. Every man has problems. Every man has an evil day. It's how well they hide it. And we're talking about the wicked. We're talking prosperity here. Well, they've got servants and, and employees and all kinds of people to not make that stuff known. There are people in fame of television and movies and fame of politics and doctors and well-known professions of great wealth and there's somebody behind the scenes of that person, male or female, they're doing the worrying that this, this person is not as good as they make themselves. But in the front of the mask as they are, they look like they're doing so well. And they're doing so well and they're doing so great and many of them, you'll find out, you'll be shocked when you pick up the paper or hear the news. This Fame person has committed suicide. If life was so great, why was it suicide? This great fame person has died of a drug overdose. I thought it was so great, so so wonderful. You know, when you go up to somebody and say, "Well, hi, how you doing?" Well, I'm doing okay. They may not be telling the truth. Neither are they plagued like other men. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Everybody has problems. Everybody has trouble. And sometimes we will put somebody up on a pedestal and we will see the good of them and we will ignore the bad of them. Because they are in our spotlight, in our limelight, and nothing can soil them, and it can be further from the truth. It would be amazing that, you know, you find a, a child has been arrested of a violent crime. And the, the, new, the Johnny on the spot goes over there and witnesses, you know, puts the microphone in front of mom, mom, mom. Oh, that would never have been my boy. My boy is a great boy. My boy, he just killed people. Not my boy. Uh, your boy is not as good as you thought he was. Because he's your boy. Now your neighbors and your teachers and the other people that, that associate with it, they may have a different story than what you see him as. Therefore pride, that's an evil, compasses them about as a chain. And he's likening it to a boa. Restrictive. But didn't he just say there's no bands in their death? And yet already he's, they wrapped himself in pride how great I am. To all the world and people who love me, bow down before me. You know, some if you read some of the stories of these actors, for, for instance. You know these actors that great, great scenes in a movie and they ha 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 and they laugh and they seem so lovable. And the private lives, the people that work with them and the people that that live and serve them let's say that guy is the most wickedest guy he won't even say hi but he'll say it on the screen it's to see and their pride and their boasting who they are and what they do that's choking them and that's driving them further and further from god and woe be the fact is they don't have god and he says the ungodly the wicked asaph's looking at these people like Lord, I've got problems at the temple today. This guy quit, and I'll just say, he, he was the flute guy 
or of the flu. And he quit because this guy was over here. He got a better part than what he got. And my string guy over here, well, he he married a Canaanite, and now he's going to serve other gods. And, uh. and my singers, most of them showed up late, Lord. And the congregation didn't like today's song as they were bringing their animals to the to the front to the to the veil. Lord, I've got problems serving you. I am loving you. I, I am under King David. I am put in a, pos a position, Lord God, to praise and honor your name. And I got a hard time. Now you just see that guy over there? That guy brought a goat to the offering. That guy is wicked. And everybody's congratulating him. Everybody's shaking his hand. And it, look, look, uh, no one comes up to me, Lord, and say, thank you for your service. That guy... His bills and everything are paid. Mine are not. Violence covers them as a garment. And that's so true. They look on the good on the outside, but Jesus says you're white and sepulchers on the outside, but inside you're full of dead man's bone. So already Asaph is saying, you know what? You just get my eyes off them. They're not as good as they think they are. Or I think they are. Their eyes stand out of fatness. And the fact, I got wealth, I got cars, I've got fame, I've got a beautiful mansion I can't afford, but I got a beautiful mansion. I got all the, the rewards or, or uh, trophies of my profession. I got it all. And then he may have a drug problem. He may have a sex problem. He's got a sin problem somewhere. And I'll tell you right now, whether a, a saved man has a sin problem and he goes to God with a, with a contrite heart and, and asks God to forgive him, God forgives him under the blood. That rich man, that man of fame goes to a psychiatrist and he pays the psychiatrist. The psychiatrist relieves him of his tensions and his problems, but he stands before God guilty. And a pill or an alcohol or something will relieve him of his sins. But it won't relieve him of his sins before a holy and righteous God. They have more than their heart could wish. So why do they keep getting millions and billions of dollars? It amazes me that, well, I was saved and backslidden and coming back to the Lord and all that. And I was into the NFL. And yes, I was part of the, the Stamp Institute 49, Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. And the refrigerator. And then I was at work one day, and I worked for building submarines. I was, I was sitting at my, my workstation, and maybe rest periods, whatever it was, but I was sitting at, at my workstation. I just got to thinking about Joe Montana and Jerry Rice for a reason. And they, make, they made the highest price made for football athletes of the time. And I forget what years it was. And there was another contract signed. He was getting more money. And it dawned to me, well, where's all this money going? So finally, you know, I, I married my wife, Lisa, and she started serving the Lord. I got rid of that junk. I just started setting myself out, serving the Lord and doing right. And then sometime, years after that, I see Joe Montana is doing commercials. What's he need commercials for? He's getting all this money. And come to the fact that he didn't have all that money. I don't know what he did with it. But he had to go out and get... Listen, you'll see these people go out and do commercials because their money's gone however they got rid of it. Some of the people, some, I'm not naming no name. Some of them take all that money and they, and they blow it on women, they blow it on wine, they blow it on parties, they blow it on drugs. And then they end up one day 
they don't have what they wish. And they might have quite opposite. They are corrupt. Yes, they are, Asa. And speak wickedly concerning op oh, excuse me, oppression. Somebody gives them a hard time. Hey, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm the pro. I'm the best. I'm the one. A lot of entertainers, they add the, the, the title, the king of whatever the thing is. The king of the rock and roll. There's king of the music. King of, the, you know, who, who are you to tell me? And you'll get a reporter come up to you and stick the microphone in their mouth. And, you know, why, why was that terrible play, man? Who do you think you are to tell me? You're a reporter. You're not out there. Concerning oppression, they speak lofty. I'm in charge. I am the one. Me, myself, and I. Following the roots of Satan. I will. I will. Seven times. I will advance above God. That's what the... Whatever they are. I mean, whether it be athletes, whether it be actors and actresses or business people, I am the best. ASAP's looking at him like, look at a wonderful life they got. ASAP, you're being fooled. You don't see the afterlife. And don't get mesmerized by uh, what, what they call it, um, real TV or reality TV. We're going behind the scenes. We're going to film this family. We're going to film this actress. We're, you're not seeing the whole life. It's still played out what you see on the camera. That actress, that actor, that athlete is not going to let you see their private life. No way, no how. How do you know? Now, how do these this, this destroyed stories in the media and the newspaper that you read about them? Well, where was that on the reality TV? It wasn't shown. They set their mouth against the heaven. God. Don't bring me God. And how many stories I've heard uh, of missionaries and of preachers and preacher stories and, and where you read somebody's book, and you le you read about somewhere and you and you find one of these famous people. You read their biography or their autobiography. Somewhere in their life, there was a preacher, there was a Christian that was brought into their life to give them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and how well they rejected it. But in the fame of the world of excellence, they're the greatest, they're the wonderful. And in the in, in the gospel light, they were the rejectors. They were, get that God out of here. I know one guy, he, he was sitting in his limousine, picked up a Christian somewhere, and the Christian was witnessing to him. This guy's well known, and he, he had he a had chauffeur stop the car. Threw the guy out of the car and threw the the, 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 the booze and the liquid in the container that booze. Dumped it on the guy in the side of the street and threw that container at him and said, You take that, your alcohol, dear God. And then drove off and probably died and went to hell. You got to read the, the books of the servants, of the bodyguards. The people behind it, the wives, the husbands of these people. They're not who they really are. ASAP has flown for that. Their tongue walketh through the earth. Boy, that's today. You read about them in the newspaper. You hear about them in the news. You see them on social media. You hear, you know, they got their own web pages. And they got this page. And they got that page. They got a fan page. And they get letters. And they get broadcasts. They get, they get their own TV spot. They get their own radio spot. And it's heard worldwide. Ace that's probably sitting there. Well, you know, I heard this story about this guy in, in Tarshish. And this guy, I mean, it, it's traveling through all the ships and stuff like that. I wonder if they know about me in Tarshish over here serving the Lord. Do the people in Dan know even what I, what's going on here at the temple? They don't even want to have God. Therefore, his people return hither. 
and the waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. They get much for their troubles. And they say, how does God do? The common person says that. You go witnessing to people in a public ministry, whatever you do publicly, however you do it, you'll get people, oh, God doesn't know. My wife doesn't know. My boss doesn't know. My parents don't know. So how does God know? He knows everything. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Oh, no, that's Santa Claus. You better watch out. You better not pass. I tell you why, because Santa Claus sees me. And when I've been a bad boy all year, if I be good for, for a month or less, Santa Claus will still bring me a gift. But God, how does he know? I don't know God, so he don't know me. And their knowledge in the Most High. And is there knowledge in the Most High? Well, who does God think he is? I mean, after all, we're all a product of evolution. God, he's just, he's just a being of love. He doesn't know nothing. Can, a, can God make a rock that he can't move? Where did Cain get his wife? How did God get all the animals on the ark? Behold, these are the ungodly, there they are, who prosper in the world. Asaph told us, you know what? You know what they mean? They prosper in the world. Get that phrase. And they do. Wickedness abounds. Pilate had two men standing before him one day. Here's a guy, insurrection, he's a murderer, he's a thief, and he's just a convict. <coughs> Excuse me. Here is Jesus Christ, he's holy, he's righteous, he's the son of God, he is God, he's the Messiah, he's the king of the Jews. Who do you want? Barabbas! What about Jesus who's called the Christ? Crucify him! Pilate, are you sure? This guy's a thief. This guy is a criminal. This guy is innocent. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. I find no fault in him. Herod says, I find no fault in him. Who do you want? Barabbas. What about him? Crucify him. Well, that's just the stage for the Jews. Their Messiah, their king is going to be crucified, according to the scriptures. What about Barabbas? He goes off and lives his life. And we don't know anything more about him. But we sure know about Jesus. You know what happens to a lost man when he goes off to hell? We don't hear no more about him. No more. The only, the only man in hell we ever learn about is the rich man. And he has no name. Lazarus had a name. People in hell don't get a name no more. Listen, when celebrities of whatever they are, whatever field they are, the great of the great of the great, when they die without Jesus Christ and go into hell, they lose their name and their titles forever. And so at one time their names are going to appear, that's the great white throne of judgment, and then they're cast off to the lake of fire, and they have no more name. They increase with riches, and yes, they do. And probably by deceit, by fraud, by lying, and by stealing. And or taxation. Yes, it's true. That guy who preaches on the street gets more harassment by the police than the man that's selling bad strawberries at the bottom of the crate. People are being arrested today and they're being fined for not wearing a mask and by coughing. Two people I read have been arrested for coughing. My post to those poses, what about the other vicious criminals out there?
Where's all the people that were shooting people up? Well, where's those stories? Oh, you mean they're confined too? <laughs> oh, I can't go out and, and do any any crime because I gotta be confined. I gotta wait to after the confinement and go do no I, that's that's baloney. There are still people out there getting robbed, there's still people getting the people are stealing from, but that's not the news. There is no news in the news. Turn off the news and read your Bible. Verily, I have, back to Asaph, cleansed my heart in vain. Oh, that's a bad statement. Let's look at Asaph. Old Testament. Jesus Christ has not been born. He's not died. He's not been buried. He's not rose again. Asaph, I've sinned against God. He goes up to the priest and says, you sinned against God, all right, you got to bring this animal. Okay? He goes out, he buys that animal. Or he gives his own animal. He brings that animal to the altar, and he lays his hand upon the horns of that, that animal, and he slays that animal himself, and then the priests do what they do with the blood, and he does what he needs to do. The Old Testament salvation of works by, by, by salvation, by being redeemed. And Asaph says, why am I doing that? I'm not getting rich. Where is the prosperity gospel for Asaph in the Old Testament? I'm not getting any hits on my YouTube page. I know you don't have YouTube, but I'm just saying. Listen, I've got YouTube. i got SoundCloud. I don't get many hits. And you get these filthy perverters of the Bible and women preachers and they're getting all these hits. They're getting all these people to their website. Why do I do it, Lord? I do it because I'm, I'm commanded to do it and I want to see at least one person. And wash my hands in innocency. Lord, I've come to you. I've repented. I, I've put my sins under that blood of that animal. I'm waiting for you to redeem Israel by the Messiah. And it, Why am I doing that when that guy's getting away with the filth he's doing? How many people in Jerusalem don't even come to the... Listen, Asaph would know he'd be at that temple every day preparing the musicians. He would know who's there and who wasn't there. And he would know who would go in there and hit hypocrisy and who would go there seriously. Don't you think Anna would, would saw that like Asa? She's at that temple every day and people come to Anna. Listen, I know you're close to God. I, I've got this trouble with my family. And I, man, my child, you pray for me. She, was a, she prayed for the people. She would pray for the people and with the people. And I can picture when she picks up her eyes, she sees on those Pharisees and thinks, that guy don't pray for anybody. He is deceiving the people. Why am I doing this? Because you love the Lord and want to do right. And then one day, how many people got to hold the baby Jesus? Anna comes in like she does every time. And I don't know more, but she comes in and she and she gets there, her spot, temple, and people come. And she got to see and maybe hold baby Jesus. The Pharisees didn't get to hold them. The priests did to do the circumcision. How many people can go up and say, and maybe, I don't know, I'm speculating, but how many people can say, like, maybe like Anna, say, I burnt Christ? Maybe change his diaper. I changed God. Maybe Anna can say, I changed God's diaper. No one else would be able to say that. Asa cannot say, of anybody else, no one leads the choir of David's people at the temple but me. And he forgot that. And when we look at other people and say, oh, the wicked people, how well they're doing. You're forgetting what you're doing for God. And you're forgetting that you may one day, if you serve the Lord correctly, you may get from God <clears throat> a well done. That wicked person that you are envying will not get a well done. You will. You are looking with eyes, and Asaph is looking with eyes of flesh, and not spiritual eyes. 
And when I read the story of the preachers, and I read the story of the evangelist, and I read the stories of, of the missionary, and I read Fox's Book of Mars, and I read about those people, I say, oh my God, what happened to them? And the persecutors in the church that persecute them will go off in the lake of fire forever. And if they die for the word of God, they're going to go to glory. They're going to be with Jesus forever. And they'll have a crown. The martyr's crown. I forget which crown is that. Or even if they didn't die for Jesus, they served the Lord and they witnessed. They're going to have gold, silver, precious stone. Hey, these rich people have gold and silver and diamonds and riches. But that don't go with them into death. That rich man could put all his wealth in his casket. The pharaohs put all their wealth in their tombs. And they didn't take it with them. They say, you know, when you die, you can't take it with you. I can take something when I die, Lord willing, if I remain faithful. I can take lost souls that came to Jesus Christ. I can take saved souls that grew and prospered in Jesus Christ. I can take my gold, silver, and precious stone with me into glory. I don't know how much gold, silver, and precious stone I have, but as far as the families of Rockefeller and the families of the Clintons and the families of the Kennedys and all the other rich families of all out through the world and the kings, the queens, and the, and the pharaohs, and the presidents, and all the bee of the bee, and the emperors. I know I will take a treasure into glory, at least something. And when you die without Jesus Christ, you don't take nothing at all. And we've all done what Asaph did. We've looked at somebody and said, well, I've done it. I looked at the farmer's market and said, that, that, that DJ they hired against the God. Man, that guy, I do it. And then I forget, if that guy dies without Christ, he won't be singing no more. I will be. He won't be happy no more. He won't be mocking God no more. I won't be. I'll be praising God. For all the day long have I been plagued. I don't really think so. And maybe he was. Look at Job. I have heard of Christians. I know of a Christian in, in Florida. I heard by through a preacher. She spent most of her life in bed and she died in a hospital bed. And I, from my understanding, what, I, what I've heard, it was pain. I heard a story from another preacher, that a man in a wheelchair, with great pain, suffering. He said he decided that was it. He had enough. He took a gun, blew it, pulled the trigger with a gun in his mouth, and God had him survived and made it worse. There may be Christians today suffering. They're saved. They're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And they're suffering from third degree burns. Or chemical burns. It's the wages of sin. Then it brings death. It may be because God is judging them. God is trying to chastise them. True. The devil's trying to stop them. Job had both. The devil's trying to stop Job, and, and God is trying to chastise them. And when you look at these conflicts in his life, it's either God is doing it for our good or God is doing it because he's judging sin or he's allowing the devil to do it because the devil wants to stop us or we do it because of our own stupidity. You know, Lord, I'm coughing, my lungs hurt, I'm in a lot of pain. I'm going to go on oxygen. How dare you? Uh, how long did you smoke those cigarettes? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm glad we do our own plaguing. I don't know if he was all day. I don't know if he's stretching his story out. And chasing every morning. Asaph, were you really that bad boy? 
I don't know. I don't know if he stretches, but I mean, if that's the truth, do you realize if that's the truth, Asaph was, had God angry with him all the time, according to what he just wrote? At least for Job, it stopped. I think, my own personal opinion, I think he's stretching it a little bit. In actuality, he had the great position of all. You know, David said, I will let no unclean thing come of my mouth. I will not sit in the congregation of the wicked. That, David said that. How many of those wicked people that Asaph's talking about right now can say, Hey, Asaph, yeah. David appointed a lot of people to service. Yeah, he did. What about you? Have you not stood in the presence of David himself? He said, I want you in charge of the musicians. Oh, yeah. There's some of those wicked people, he said, that David's never even talked to at all. How's that? If I say, Asaph, I will speak thus. Behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. You know, he's afraid of offending people. He wants to he wants to cry and complain to others. Until I went to the sanctuary. Now the story changes. That's the temple. Where he's at with the musicians. When he came to say, what, what would he be doing? He's bringing his offering to God. Then understood I their end. I went to temple and I heard the rabbi speak. Oh. They're going to hell. And they knew about hell. And as for me, Asaph, God and David are pleased with me. That's the difference. God is not pleased with them. He's pleased with me. The world is pleased with them. But the world hates me. Asaph. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not everybody in Daytona Beach loves us. There are some that do, but God loves us doing it. Surely thou, God, did set them in slippery places. Hell. Going to hell. They're on the road to hell. And they're sliding all over the place. They're not as sound as Asaph has said. As I said, remember, they may have a drug problem. They may have a sex problem. They may have a money problem. Their life is not as hunky-dory as you see it is. Thou, canest, thou castest them down into destruction. That's hell. They're sliding right into hell. How are they brought into desolation? Hell. Alone. As in a moment. That moment they die, they wake up in hell. The rich man died, was buried, and he lifted up his eyes in hell. That quick. May not even be a moment. Quicker than a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. He didn't say consumed at, all right, you go into hell and you burn up. That's it. He said, you're. And the Bible in Jesus says, torments. Torments in terror. That's their new life. That's their new fame. That's their new wealth. As a dream. When one waketh, you're sleeping. So, O Lord, when thou waketh, second advent, thou shalt despise their image. He's going to hate the look of their face. And can you imagine the terror they're going to have when they see Jesus coming on that horse? And Jesus is going to be like, I don't care. You're marked as an enemy. I see that mark, the devil mark. Thus my heart, Asaph, was grieved, and I was plucked in my reins. He had to change of heart. Lord, I've sinned. There, 
Yeah, they may look good, but their outcome is not going to be good. I may not look good, but Lord, with you in glory, I'll look good. So foolish was I. That's a sin. Foolish is a sin, and he's confessing his sin. And ignorant. That's the first time that word shows up, ignorant. Paul says, I would not have you be ignorant. What was the ignorance of Asaph? Man, they look so good. They look so well off. They look so... I was wrong. I went to temple. I heard a message. And I realized God spoke to my heart that morning. They're not well to do. And I was as a beast before them. Before thee, God. I'm just a dumb animal. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee, God. How's that? How do you like that? He said, I'll never leave thee or forsake thee, God. And you'll never leave me or forsake me. That's Old Testament. Thou hast holded me by my right hand. Asaph says, I'm holding hands with God. They're not. <laughs> Look at, look at the story now change. After he went to temple. Why should I go to church and hear the preaching? Asaph went to temple and heard the message. And look how much he did it complete. He has repented. He has completely returned out of the way he was saying. Oh, they're so great and so fine. No, I'm so great and fine. And not in pride. I'm great and fine because God's holding my hand and God's walking with me. Not walking with them. And thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, God's counsel. Like you just went to temple and got the message. And afterward, receive me to glory when I die. He just said, they're going to get destruction. They're going to be consumed with terrors. I'm not going there. Asaph said, I'm not going to hell. How do you like that for a surety of salvation? In the law with David reigning. And there's the law. How about Job? Though my, my body, this, this flesh, some, the worm shall eat this body. I'm not quoting the first way. He said, yet I shall see God with my eyes. I'm not quoting that verse correctly. You know what that is? That's assurance of salvation. And there was no law for Job. Whom have I in heaven? But they. He has no angels he prays to. He has no saints he prays to. He has God. There you go, Catholics. Only one he has in heaven is God. And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Asaph, the only one important to Asaph that's always been important to Asaph is God, including David. David. You're not the tops in my life. Asaph, if he was married, my wife is not the top. I love my wife, if he had a wife, but I love God more. That's a great marriage. My flesh and my heart fail. Heart failure. Here's a good heart failure in the Bible. But God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. He said in verse 7, they have all their heart's desire. Verse uh, 4, he said, they got their firm strength when they die. He said, no, I got the heart and strength of God. I'm doing a lot better than they are. I bet you the music changed after this. When, when Asaph went to the temple. I bet you put a little more heart into it. For lo, they that are far from thee, God, shall perish. Now watch that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Those that don't believe, those who are wicked against God, they shall perish. How do you like that? Thou, God, has destroyed all them that go a-whoring from thee. God describes idolatry and all that. A-whoring. 
Those people don't walk with you, God. I see that now. But it is good for me to draw near to God. That's what I need to do. And I have put my trust in the Lord God. That's good. That I may declare all thy work. I'm going to speak nothing but of God. He got rid of his envy. And he got his thinking off himself. And he got his thinking on himself. To what God is doing with him. Glory to God. 